Hello again, Midgardian, today we will talk about Petneric origin. There have been a lot of questions regarding pets in my channel. We will address some of those questions today. Let the PvP aka Pet vs Pet begin. First we will talk about the pet summoning mechanics, how to get pet equipments and upgrading it, how to complete Pouring Streamland final challenge for the Hoarder Dreamland event, what are the recommended early to mid game pets, what are the recommended late game pets, what are the recommended pets by jobs slash class, and finally talk about time limited pets. There are two types of coupon used to summon pets. The pet coupon and super pet coupon. To summon tier. A pets, you can use pet coupon or diamonds to do so. Every time you use a pet coupon the pity meter will increase. A tier A pet is guaranteed to be summoned when the pity meter hits 60. This does not mean you can only get a tier A pet every 60 summons. There is actually a 3% chance a tier A pet is dropped whenever you use a pet coupon. To summon tier. S pets, you can use the super pet coupon or neuron berries. There are two separate pity meter for legendary pet summoning, one for tier S pets and one for tier A pets. Every time you use a super pet coupon, both of these meter will increase. Tier S pets is guaranteed every 120 summons and tier A pets is guaranteed every 60 summons. Please note the tier A pet pity meter in the legendary summoning is separate from the normal summoning. There is a 1% chance for a tier S pet to drop or a 2.9% tier A pet to drop when you use the super pet coupon. The other item drop rates is as follow. Next, we will talk about the wish list. You can pick the pets of your choice in the wish list. There are two category of wish list. The tier A tier S wish list. When you hit the required amount for the pet pity meter, one of the pets chosen in the wish list will drop. The drop rate are equal for all the pets selected in the wish list. Please note other pets not in the wish list can also drop when you use the pet slash super pet coupon. Only pet pity meter drops will be from the pets listed in the wish list. Here is an example, Antasha and Ghost Samurai is in my tier S wish list. Once I hit the 120 required amount in the pet pity meter. Either Aunt Asha or Ghost Samurai is guaranteed to drop. Every summon will also give you pet points, which can be used to exchange items in the pet shop. Some players are not aware that you can actually rename your pets. This is helpful to differentiate your own pets from other players. At level 65, you can unlock Bet Gear System. Pet equipment will further boost Bet's ability. You can get pet equipment from the Hoarder Dreamland event. Each day, there is different set of challenges with their respective equipment rewards. There are six tiers for each challenge. Tier 6 provides the best rewards along with the hardest boss battles. Each hoarder challenge battle will need a ticket. We recommend to use the advanced ticket for the best rewards per battle. Most players have problem completing the tier 6 pouring stream challenge. This is because the ghost samurai will one hit kill players when it appears. To complete this challenge, you will need to stand at the lowest corner and rally your pets every time they move away. Doing this will prevent the Ghost Samurai from using his special attack. There are five different sets of pet equipment. The set that focus on physical DPS or top student, power of wind fury and endless blade. While the fountain of magic set focuses on magic caster pets and finally, divine gift set is for the tank pets. There are six equipment slots for pets. Equipping two or four piece of the same equipment set will grant extra bonus stats. A common mistake by players is to use the same equipment set for all the six pieces. The optimal way to make the pet stronger is to combine equipment from two different sets. You can dismantle the pet equipment that you don't need to gain Amber. Amber in turn is used to enhance equipments. There are three tiers of pet equipment, common, rare, and precious. 
The main difference between equipment tiers are stats granted and maximum enhancement level. For example, rare equipment can enhance to maximum plus 12 while precious to a maximum plus 15. Next we will talk about the recommended early slash mid game pets. The first will be Baphomet Jr. Baphomet Jr. is very useful due to its lifesteal attack ability. This ability will heal the player and the pet HP. This save up potion cost in the early slash mid game and allow players to AFK farm without problem. Baphomet Jr. however have weak defense and will struggle in late game where monster damage is higher than the lifesteal healing rate. Next is the S tier pet Dunnel. Dunnel have a large AoE damage ability that is excellent for farming and monster research grinding. Dunnel's attack is AoE and many players assume Dunnel is the best S tier pet due to this. However, this is not true as late game monsters have high magic defense and pet equipment does not have the ignore magic defense stat, Dunnel's attack is magic based and does not scale well late game. Next is our C rank pet, Vocal. Vocal is the budget healer pet that is very accessible and can be maxed out fairly easily. This pet is highly recommended for free to play players. This pet need to have high HP magic attack to be useful. Vocal start to lose out at usefulness once reach mid game. The A rank pet Hadei Babe is the tanker that can taunt enemies. This pet is relatively useful until mid game then it drop off its tankiness. This pet is the stop gap before you manage to summon the S rank pet Earth Lord. Try to get as much HP stats for this pet. The B rank pet Millie is a good healer in the early game. This pet is better than Vocal as a healer. Millie however have a very long skill cooldown making it not viable from mid game onwards. They're more pet that can heal better and have better survivability. Only pick this pet if you do not have a better healing pet option. Now, we will go through the recommended late game pets. First off, we will talk about everyone's favorite waifu, Antasha Alpha. Waifu Antasha Alpha needs to have a near perfect stats role in order for her to be strong. This means the more stars in her stats along with high rating is required. The stars will extend her overload mode transformation duration. Each full star extend her transformation by 3 seconds and each half star extend her transformation by 1.5 seconds. The cooldown for the transformation is 30 seconds. This means if you manage to roll a lot of full stars, Antasha will stay in her overload mode most of the time in battle. Antasha deals high shadow damage during her transformation, however many late game monsters slash bosses have the shadow or undead classification. This makes her only useful for certain fights. Next we will talk about our favorite sword wielding maniac, the S rank ghost samurai pet. This pet is overpowered from early game until mid game and then become average in late game. This pet potential is unlock when paired with high attack speed class such as hunter or assassins. Ghost samurai is still useful late game as his skill have the ignore defense attribute. Next is a free-to-play friendly A-class pet. You can get the Divination Cat from completing the Alfheim Dailies Challenge. We can max out this feline pet once we complete the 300th floor in Alfheim which requires the player to be around level 95. This pet will still be useful in late game due to its skill Battle Blessing. This skill deals 800% physical damage to enemies and has a 30% chance to grant a random damage buff. The next S-Class pet is the Earth Lord. Earth Lord is the best tank pet yet. Earth Lord is very tanky and can AoE taunt enemies. Its skill allow Earth Lord to lure slash suck in enemy mobs making it very useful for endless tower challenge. This skill however is a double-edged sword as Earth Lord might aggro unnecessary mobs causing a party wipe. Early to mid game, Earth Lord can easily out-tank most players. 
Next up is Candle Morn. This Class A pet is one of the best healer pet used for grinding. Candle Morn's ability heals the player and grants a shield that absorb 5% damage of the target's HP. Not only that, the shield also deals a 20% fire magic damage to nearby enemies. This is one of the best overall pets around. Next is the resident nerd of the Class A pet, Dr. Owl. This pet is Sniper Class best friend. Dr. Owl ability deal 800% wind damage while also increase the target's damage taken from long range by 20%. Certain builds such as Soul Break Assassin should use this pet as it dramatically increase the damage output. This pet is a must have for MVP boss fights if you're a ranged character. By focusing on the cooldown reduction, we can utilize the best potential of this pet. As this pet is relatively fragile, focus on getting more HP buff equipment as well. The C-Class Pet, Oban is a supplementary pet that boosts water-based damage slash skill. This pet is useful for Wizard, Sage and Hunter that uses water element arrows. As an added bonus, this pet is free to play friendly and can be easily max out. One of the few rare C-Class Pet that is still useful in late game. The S-Class Pet, Fire Lord is a strictly pay-to-win pet. You will love this pet if you own it and hate it if you have to fight it. At the max tier, Fire Lord can one-hit kill players during PvP. Only go for this pet if you have a kidney to spare or have too much money to spare. The Class A Pet Squidget is a popular pet for all classes. The pet's ability grant 15% damage boost to all allies for 10 seconds. The buff can also be stacked. Try to reduce the ability cooldown as much as possible to gain a good damage boost for the entire party. Everyone loves Squidget, despite how weird it looks. The B-Class Pet, Volcanic Bulldog is an overall good tank pet for all classes. Its ability grant a shield that absorb damage based on 20% of the owner's max HP and also provide effect resistance. The Abnormal Resistance ability itself it worth to have this pet. This is the Priest class, best friend. While not obvious, the pet's skill becomes stronger in late game as the owner's HP grow in leaps and bounds. The A-class pet, Child of Earth, can be obtained from Pet Shop Redeem with pouring coins. This pet is extremely good for PvP or PvE. Its ability, behind me, transfer the damage taken by the owner to itself. This prevents one-hit kill from MVP or from players. This pet is often used in PvP and War of Empyrean to counter lethal one-hit skill such as Azura Strike or Soul Destroyer. The A-Class pet, Fire Spirit, is familiar to Oban and is a fire magic damage booster. Its ability Meteor Storm increase the fire magic damage taken by enemies by 20% and has a 5% chance to stun enemies. This pet is not to be used as a DPS but rather a support pet that boosts the owner's fire magic damage. To use this pet effectively, boost its HP as it has low survivability. The A-Class Pet, so he is the best attack speed support pet. Auto Attack Assassins and Hunter need to have this pet. So he's ability Lucid Dream grants 10% attack speed, 5% movement speed as well as 2% lifesteal. If you have already reached 500 attack speed then you do not need this pet. Next, we will list the pets recommended for each job.
Finally, we will talk about the Time Limited Pets. Time Limited Pets, as the name suggested, is only available for a certain period and uses the gotcha system to draw it. These pets are extremely powerful and strictly pay-to-win pets. In general, players will outgrow even S-Class pets in the late game. This, however, does not apply for time-limited pets. These pets are overpowered and usually purchased by the biggest whales. Here are some examples of the time-limited pets, Celestial Rabbit, Minorus Drummer and Antasha Beta. These pets are even more expensive than the Fire Lord pet. You may able to purchase one if you sell your soul to gravity or have an unlimited supply of kidneys. We would recommend you to spend wisely on these games as it can be a bottomless pit. Hope you enjoy the video. Please subscribe and like the video if it's helpful. Thank you.